Good evening. Good to see everybody out tonight. Boy, we got a good crowd out tonight on a Wednesday night. A beautiful night here in sunny Florida. Wow, good to see everybody out. Well, I want to just say I'm Pastor Mike. For those that are on Facebook Live, we've been getting people been watching on Facebook Live, and just let you know that I am Pastor Mike, and good to have you with us if you're joining in. We would like to invite you to our services. Man, we had uh, we had like seven brand new visitors on Sunday morning, and what a blessing that was. We appreciate appreciate them being out. We had several of them back out Sunday night. We've got several back out tonight. We've got Stephen back there. Good to see you, my brother. And we've got Shane. Good to see you again, buddy. Then we got Tricia, who uh, was rededicated and baptized on Sunday. And then we've got Brian back with my man Brian right there, buddy. I tell you what, what a blessing to have everybody out tonight. And uh, man, looks like a really, really good crowd. Looks like Dennis and Joanne have packed a pew right there, man. Y'all, y'all got your pew loaded down, right? Give you another, we give you another one or two to start on. But anyhow, good to have everybody out tonight. I wanted to show you a couple things today. Carla had had these made, and I picked them up today. We got our new church brochures in. And boy, these are super nice. I put one on on uh, Facebook today. You could share that on there and share that with your people. But we got a bunch of them back there. I got a bunch of them up here. We got a bunch of them. Take a few and give them out. It's got our new location. It's got our new picture on there. It's got our phone number. Got all the all the vital information on there. Then it's got the plan of salvation on the back. The plan that we use, a very simple four step plan. And uh, you can take that. We got some people that. Uh, we're going to be talking about being altar workers and want to work, learn how to w- work with people coming to the front and talking to them. And we're going to be having a class about that. But if you can, if you can begin to familiarize yourself with this plan, you'll be you'll be way down the road when we start because this is what just a very simple plan that we use. But well, I tell you, aren't they nice? Uh, and the lady I picked them up from today said, I, it, it, "She's thinking about coming to church. She said, I think I'm gonna come." Good. I said, "Man, I love that." I love that. So, man, what a blessing that was that uh, she took down information and, and said, I, I, think, I think we're going to come down too. And, uh, you know, I told somebody today, I was visiting with them, and, and I told them, I said, you know, we thought that when we got in our own building, it was going to help us. Man, we didn't know it was going to help us this much already. Yes. And, uh, man, new people are coming, and they're being invited. They're seeing flyers. They're seeing information. The, the people are talking to them, but hand these out, get them out, put them on your Facebook, share them with everybody. I don't, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm tech talk you for a minute. I put one of these on Facebook today and I boosted it. How many people knows what that means? About three or four people. That means you pay, you pay like $10 and it boosted it to, to, to people in our surrounding area. And I did that a couple weeks ago when we were getting ready to open up, and I noticed man, a lot of people in the area had seen that and had liked it. So uh, I boosted this one so people could see that we're open for business at our new location. But isn't that, isn't that so nice? Thank you, baby girl. I tell you, it looks so nice. It looks so nice. Yeah. And uh, they did a good job with it. But like I said, it's, it's, it's a very easy witnessing tool. But like I do, give somebody, hey, here's, here's where we're going to church. And by the way, this tells you how to be saved right here. That's right. So it's a very easy witnessing tool. So thank you for that. I love that. Don't forget tomorrow we'll be having church cleaning down at the old building. I'm glad we got a good crowd out tonight because I need to beg you to come out tomorrow. <laughs> if you'll come out, I'll, the more that you will come out, the less I'll have to do. So maybe we'll have to go out on the street and hire people to come in. But uh, we'll be starting probably about 9. Probably some of us will be there before 9 o'clock. But uh, that'll be down at the old building. We've got to get some stuff out. Got to make some trips down to the building and, and uh, our rental shed and put some stuff in there. And we've got to get some stuff cleaned up. But uh, hopefully we get that finished up here in the next little bit. So don't forget that. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Now, if you, you come at 9, we might be finished. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. We've got to get to Children's Church and we've got to get... Uh, the church and everything fixed up down there. But uh, if you can, come out and be a part of that. Amen? Amen. Well, we've got some anniversaries today. We've got an anniversary with John and Pat back there. Happy anniversary, you guys. 
Now, they're not on Facebook, but I, somebody ought to show them. They got a lot of comments on there today. And uh, so somebody needs to show them that they were, you made Facebook Live. Not Facebook Live, but Facebook. And then uh, little Bobby and Dutch Matco today have an anniversary today. So we're going to get ready to go to prayer. And uh, don't forget our 320 prayer time. Ephesians 3.20, remember, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So don't forget, don't forget that verse there and praying at 3.20. And then we thank God for the services we've been having. Visitors coming, man, isn't that a blessing? Amen. I would just caution you again as we talk about that, be warm, be welcoming, be friendly, uh, help people out, people coming in, show them work. Show them where the restrooms are. Show them where the nursery is. Show them where the children's church is going to be. Show them all those things. Help them get in and get situated. Because it's difficult to come in and walk into a brand new church not knowing anybody. And so be sure and do that. And then pray for the folks that have been saved and have been baptized and rededicated. And uh, boy, we are thankful for them. Continue to pray for the Ukraine. Miss Nina. I saw that she getting ready to take a trip somewhere. I forgot where it said <coughs> Was it, where, was, where was she going? But she was taking a trip somewhere and probably needing a few days away to relax a little bit, all that she's under over there. She so pray for our country and our government, all of our leaders, and uh, we need that. Pray for all the mass shootings that we've had in the last several weeks. Pray for Tony Holland's family. He passed away uh, yesterday. We missed, uh, uh, mine went blank. Wow. Help me with your name. <laughs> Wow, she put, she put on there right when we were just about the time we were finishing up, put on there that Tony had passed away. And that's, that is uh, uh, Michelle and Amanda's dad. So pray for that family and then pray for Whitney Boswell. Uh, her sister had to have two surgeries and her uncle Huey had surgery. He has cancer, not doing well. Continue to pray for Randy Skeen's family. Randy passed away last Monday a week ago right after Easter. He's pastor in the church I grew up in. And pray for his wife, Sharon, and daughter, Katie, and their church. Also pray for Eddie. Eddie looked so good, man, yesterday. Looking good today. You still feeling better? Better. You better. could tell, I could tell yesterday. Come and had that, had that glow, that smile by yeah. him, man. <laughs> and I knew he was feeling better. But pray that uh, that will continue to go well. Bill and Shirley back out tonight. We appreciate them being here. Pray for Bill with his uh, heart, with his blood clots and stuff. But the medicine will dissolve those. And then, of course, Shirley wasn't feeling well Sunday. And uh, pray for them. Pray for their grandson, Lucas. Still got a long way to go out of ICU, but he's got a long way to go. Pray for Michael Lopez. He had some uh, things that show that had shown up on his chest x-ray. And uh, hopefully everything will be okay. He sees a pulmonologist on May the 3rd. Shirley and Cliff are back. And I guess they were out for an anniversary trip, we'll call it. How's that? But uh, they're back, and, and then Shirley's uh, knee replacement is on May the 2nd. So I'm going to pray for her. We want to try to get your church clean before May the 2nd. Just, just, <laughs> throwing, just throwing that out there. I don't want to see Shirley down there hobbling. Shirley be down there hobbling around. Uh, she'd be like Eddie. She'd be hobbling around down there trying to clean the church. So let's try to get that finished up. And then Barb and Shirley's sister, Marilyn, who has lung cancer. Sharon Watts, who was here Sit right there about where Cliff and Shirley are, one of the bus drivers watch out. Oh, what a blessing to see her. Uh, she's supposed to be bringing another bus driver with her Sunday. And her mother, who is 89, just had three surgeries last week. And uh, pray for her. And then her brother, uh, Butch, has stage four metastatic melanoma. Am I saying that right? Metastatic melanoma. And then Neil Van, who's uh, Evelyn's nephew, they did some work on him, got the blood clots out the way, did something to his heart. He's still on the respirator, but got a long way to go, but looks like he's a little bit better. So pray for him. Kevin's uh, great nephew's family, he's still in critical condition. Pray for him, and pray for all those on our prayer list that came out yesterday, and we have a, a, an amazing amount of people on the prayer list. So we're going to get ready to pray tonight. Major, can you come and pray for us tonight, buddy? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Great to see everybody out this evening. Got a man, what a great looking Wednesday night crowd yes. we have. Yes. Great to see everybody out here. What a beautiful day we've had and great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you today with thankful hearts, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for being in your house, Lord. We want to thank you for this church, Lord. We want to thank you for all the folks that are here, dear Lord, and all the folks that are online, dear Lord. Pray a special blessing on everyone, dear Lord, that came out on this Wednesday night, dear Lord, to, to lift up you and to praise you and to learn more about you and to get your word, study your word, dear Lord. Lord, we're going to pray if there's anybody here or anybody watching online that doesn't know you or that's away from you or that's cold, pray that tonight will be the night that they say yes to Jesus, dear Lord, before it's everlasting too late. Father, I want to lift up the prayer list, dear Lord, uh, all those that were mentioned, any that weren't mentioned, all the ones on the, the church Facebook page, Lord, that goes out on email, I ask that you'd reach down and touch their needs. Lord, be with them as only you can. Lord, I want to pray for America, dear Lord, pray for America to turn their hearts back to you, dear Lord. I want to pray for revival in our land, dear Lord, I want to pray for revival that you started in me, Lord, and started my family, and started my church, with my brothers and sisters here, dear Lord, help us to, to take the gospel out, Lord, to the lost and dying world. Lord, this, Lord, we just want to thank you for this church. Lord, I want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord. It's just uh, been miraculous the past few months, Lord, seeing everything that you've done. Lord, we've seen souls saved, souls were dedicated, souls baptized, dear Lord, and that uh, people are growing in you, dear Lord, and just uh, want to help us to not get in the way, dear Lord, and uh, keep the devil away from us, dear Lord. I pray that you just put a hedge of protection and keep the devil out, dear Lord, so that we, we can do your will, dear Lord. But we want to continue to see souls saved. We want to continue to grow and just grow in you, dear Lord, and just let you do the work, dear Lord. Let us just... Uh, just be here, dear Lord, and not be in the way, dear Lord, and just help us to serve you, dear Lord, and do what glorifies and honor you. Lord, we ask all of this in your holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Major. I'm going to turn this around here. It's, people say it's backwards. You can't see the screen. Huh? You can't see the screen on here. It's backwards. Okay, see the screen. Comment they can't read, read the screen. Is it good? They don't need to see the screen now. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see me now. <laughs> it's more important for me to see me than for them to see the screen. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. We'll get started out. Again, thank you for being out on Wednesday night Bible study, what we call prompt night. And as the major said, this is a good looking crowd. Like, wow, this is a tremendous crowd. We appreciate you being out. Thank you for being here. We appreciate anybody that comes out to the Lord's house. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let me just make, as you're turning, get your Bible open to the book of Acts, chapter number 20. Book of Acts, chapter number 20. And we're going to start right there. But let me say I made a decision yesterday morning, in case you didn't hear that. I'm going to forego our Sunday night Revelation study for the time being. Now, I'm going to still be in Revelation doing some things on the seven churches that I didn't finish up when we finished up. And doing that for the next several weeks. But uh, we have no idea when we're going to get internet. And Sunday night was a mess with, the, with this, little, this little thing right here. This is what's carrying the internet. And uh, it's been kicking off even in the middle of the service. Been doing all kind of crazy stuff. It doesn't have really enough power to boost it out. And, and that study on the five hours of Revelation. If, if, if you miss four or five minutes in the middle of the lesson, you can be totally lost. And so I'm just going to forego that. When we get the internet back, then we'll, we'll just jump right back into that. Amen. We'll RBAP or do something, but we're going to be on the, uh, a little bit more on the seven churches of Revelation uh, on Sunday night. So come out and you'll enjoy that. I enjoyed that study myself. Amen? Amen. You ready? Got your Bible, Acts chapter number 20, verse number 28. Paul was talking to the elders of Ephesus. Now that ought to be a familiar name to you if you were here for the seven churches of Revelation. That was the first church, the desired church, the church of the apostles, the church that had left its first love. And Paul was here in the book of Acts getting ready to move on. And he was talking to the Ephesian elders. And listen to what he said in verse number 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Man, there's a lot just packed into that verse right there. Take heed unto yourself. I will say that to you and I. Take heed Amen. unto yourself. Because we got a lot of craziness going on in the world. We're going to talk about that tonight a little bit if we can. Oh, man, I forgot I've got to get this out here just in a minute. But uh, beginning in verse number 29 says, For I know this, this is what Paul said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing 
the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend, commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Let me call your attention to a couple of things in verse number 29. That Paul said he had a concern that after he left there, he spent three years preaching and teaching, warning them night and day. And he said, now I've got a fear, I'm concerned that after I leave here that grievous wolves will enter in. You know, the wolves always want to go after the sheep. Yeah. And we have a lot of wolves, we have a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes. And Jesus right. said, Beware of the wolves that are in sheep's clothing. We got a lot of people in pulpits tonight in America that are wolves. Yeah. Right? Now they're acting like they're sheep and they might sound like they're sheep, but they're really wolves. Right. So we got we got people outside that door out yonder that's just waiting to attack some of our folk. Yep. Right. I got a message this week from somebody that said, is it normal to have doubts about wanting to be baptized after you get saved? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Satan will put all kinds of doubts into your mind. <coughs> I can guarantee you Satan didn't put that doubt in their mind before they got saved. Right. Right. But as soon as you get saved to make a decision, there are people out there, and then there are people that will tell you all kinds of crazy stuff. My buddy Trevor, not Travis, my buddy Trevor called me the other night and somebody had told him some crazy thing. He said, is that true? I said, absolutely not. Yeah. There are people out there that got all kind of false doctrine, and let me tell you why they have false doctrine. Because 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. The modern versions of the Bible have taken that verse out. Right. Well, they left the verse in, but they changed it to where it doesn't even make sense. Right. Study. Amen. Study yes. the word of God. You want to protect yourself and protect your family, you need to study the word of God. Amen. Because there are wolves out there that are just waiting to come in. Amen. And then this is what he said in verse number 30. He said, not only are there wolves out there that are just waiting to enter in among you, also of your own selves shall men rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. There are people that come to, Satan sends people to church. Satan places people in church. Yeah. Right. Satan comes to church. Yep. Yeah. And all I say, listen, I've been, I've been here three, three and a half years. All I've got to do is give the pulpit over to the wrong person, and all they got to do is get up and say the wrong thing, and they have just defeated everything I've been yep. preaching yeah. for three and a half years. Yes. Amen. My Amen. job, not your job, my job is to guard the flock that God yes. has Amen. Amen. It's not your job, although you need to help me. My job is to guard the pulpit. My job is to guard the church. My job is to guard who gets on the front. My job is to guard that because all it does is for somebody to get up and say one thing contrary. Right. Yep. And there might be somebody sitting there saying, oh, well, that's not what the pastor says. And next thing you know, you've got trouble in the church. Amen. Right. Amen. Well, I've already told them on the Trojan horse. Twelve lessons. Stephen, do you know the story of the Trojan horse? <laughs> Kelly. Shane, do you know the story of the Trojan horse? Yeah. Tristan, do you know the story of the Trojan horse? <laughs> Brian, do you know the story of the Trojan horse? Does anybody know the story of the Trojan horse? Amen. Well, let me tell you the story of the Trojan horse. <laughs> Just in case, it's been a few weeks since you heard it, so you may have forgotten. That's right. I may have forgotten myself. So you help me out if I forget it. How many people know it? All right, so you have the oil. It seems like a lot of people know it. I'm not so sure I know it. Years and once upon a time, back in the city of Troy, the Trojans, the people from Greece, were fighting the people of Troy. 
And the city of Troy had walls and city walls built around it and gates that they could not penetrate. So the battle had raged on between the Trojans and between the city of Troy for ten years. And they were just like a standoff. Nobody they just, just kind of just button heads. Somebody out of the Trojan army said, well, let's build them a horse, a wooden horse. Now remember, the horse was the symbol of the city of Troy. Troy. So they built this great big gigantic wooden horse. They rolled him up to the gates and they left. They burnt their campgrounds like they had left. They got into the ships and took off around the cove like they had gone back to Greece. And the next morning when the people got up and the guards and the sentries looked over the wall, down there outside the gates of Troy, they said, wow, there's a horse. The Greeks have given up. The Trojans have given up. They have given up and just gone home and we have won the war. And they said, man, let's go out and get that thing. It had to be beautiful. It had to be, it had to be something to look at. And they said, let's go out and get that and bring it into the sea. Well, one of their pagan priests had more sense than most people. He said, beware of Greeks. Very good. That's right. all. Oh, no, no, no. No, it had to look good. It had to be just right. Oh, it had to be. It was a symbol of their city. They had surrendered. The Trojans had surrendered. The Greeks had surrendered. And it left. They didn't give it up. They went out there and got that horse and rolled him into the city, shut the gates. And there sits the Trojan horse right there in the city of Troy. Everybody's just partying, having a good time, just ha ha, he he, we won the war, drinking and, and boozing around. Well, that night, after they were all drunk, and, and I don't know if they had any of, any of that stuff. <laughs> they, they all got beyond themselves, and they went to sleep, and they laid down, and they were beyond doing anything. There was a trap door in the horse, right. and the door opened up, right. and Greek soldiers dropped out. And they opened the gates of the city of Troy. And they, I don't know, they whistled on that, but they notified the rest of the Greek soldiers. And here they come, and they came into the city of Troy and destroyed the city of Troy. Yeah. Yep. From that time to this time, anything that's called a Trojan horse means that somebody's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Right. They're right. trying to trick you. They're trying to deceive you. Right. Now, for all these new folks, that don't know what I've taught them on yet, unless they've been following on Facebook. I've taught on the Trojan horse of humanism. I've taught on the Trojan horse of ecumenicism. I've taught on the Trojan horse of modernism. Four lessons on modern Bible versions. I've taught on modern songs along with modernism. I've taught on emotionalism. Hold on to your hats. I've taught on sexualism. Two lessons on sexualism. I taught two list lessons on New Age mysticism. And I'm not finished with that yet. But when I think about that, by the way, I'm against all those things I just mentioned. Amen. You know, when you think about that, I'm anti-Trojan horse. Yeah. You say, preacher, how do you feel about the Trojan I am anti-Trojan horse. You know, the world today, I, I get amazed. And, you know, you listen to Elon Musk and some of these leaders of the world, and all they're looking for is a new world order. They're looking for a world leader. I tell you what they're looking for. They're looking for the anti-Christ. Yeah. I have news for you. I'm not looking for the anti-Christ. Yeah. I'm looking for the Christ. I'm looking for him to come back in the rapture and take us back to heaven. Amen. You know, the world is looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the real Christ. Amen. Antichrist anti he's against. Right. So can I say again, in case you don't know, I'm against all those things I just mentioned. Amen. Amen. I'm, and listen, in fact, I jotted down a couple things today along the way that I am anti. Just the why might as well just throw that out. I'm anti-abortion. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, Amen. Man, I am anti. Hey, if you would have heard Abby Johnson speak the other night, man, it would have brought tears to your eyes. Listen to her who worked in an abortion clinic and talking about sucking the brains and the arms and legs of those little babies out and putting them in their hands. Right place, amen. 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 Amen.
anti-alphabet people. Amen. 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 I'm anti. John, turn around. Help, help Stephen understand who the alphabet people are. Man, listen, I am anti-alphabet people. Man, listen, all the letters that they have taken and taken and just captured out of the alphabet. I'm not against those people, but I'm against what they stand for. Amen. I'm anti-adultery. Amen. Man, listen, I, I'm against that. That's not right. I'm anti-atheism. Amen. Those are just A words. Not need to go on or you know, go on to B, C, D, go through the alphabet of what I'm anti here. That's just some of the things that start with A that I'm against. I want you to know my position. I want you to know my stand. I want you to know my point. I want you to walk out that door and walk out. So I don't know what the preacher he's for or again. Right. I want you to know, I'm like, listen, I am anti a lot of things. Amen? Amen. As a Christian, here's the problem we got in Christianity today. We got people say, oh, I'm for Jesus, but they're not against Satan. You can't be for Jesus and not be against Satan. Right. You can't be for Jesus and not be against sin. We got so many people today that they're weak, they're washy, they're, they're, washy, they're puny, they're anemic. They don't have enough backbone, they don't have enough gall, they don't have enough guts to get up and say, What does say the word of God? And therefore, we're in trouble. Amen. You got the good stand up sound for Jesus and the other stand up sound, I'm going to side with the preacher and I'm going to be anti things also. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I'm just sick and tired of, of, of weak, sickly, puny, effeminate type of churches and church members. Amen. 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 I, I mean, I'm just sick and tired of that. Man, we, listen, 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 and, and, and I'm going to hit on this in a few weeks so women hold on. No offense women, I love women. I'm married to a woman. <laughs> but this new modern feminist movement, the feminism has taken over the world that is it, it is taking men out of their role and putting women in a role that God never ordained them to be. I'm just going to tell you, feminism is we're coming to the church with a Trojan horse. Yeah. Amen. I'm not Amen. You want to burn your brown panties? Go burn them somewhere else. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Got to keep them on in the Lord's house. Amen. 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 We, we, we don't need all that. We don't need all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay, everybody, listen. I'm just going to say God gave everybody. Listen, I'm going to say again. God created us. God came up with a plan. God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. No offense, my brother back there. But he made Adam and Eve. And I'm going to say what? He set the standard. He said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be married unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. I'm going to tell you what? God set the standard. He's got it in the book. It's inside this right here. And I'm going to tell you what? You can't widen the margin. Amen. It's not yeah. like that, but I can't have no life to take it up from God. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, you stand back there, can't go and wait on me tonight, just mosey right on out, get yourself right in the vehicle, just get right on down the road, because it won't do you one eye only worth the good to stand back there and say, now, preacher, I just don't agree with that. Just take that thought to the house. Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> Preach it, man. Preach it, Amen. Churches today are bringing Trojan horses into their midst. Yes. Right. Yes. And I just thought I, I should have given this lesson 13 lessons ago. Mm -hmm. But I got so excited on Trojan horses and all those isms that I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, tonight must be the night because this is the only thought I could get on my mind to go on Wednesday night. So I want to give you some reasons why Trojan horses are so bad for us today. Mm -hmm. Number one. You don't think I could get to that fast, did you? Yeah. Did. <laughs> Good job. Number one, Trojan, horse, tro Trojan horses are dangerous. Amen. Right. They're dangerous. Right. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Trojan horses are dangerous. Right. I've got my tech man over there. He's a man to me. Amen. Amen. These young boys, these young girls, these young people, when they have my computer, know there's a Trojan virus out there. Right. That just attaches itself and just slips right in and gets into your computer and will absolutely eat it up and destroy it if you don't get rid of it. Yeah. Right. Well, the same thing, it's happening in people's lives, it's happening in churches, and Trojan horses are dangerous. Amen. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Let me go back to my story on Trojan horse. The people of Troy did not know that the horse was dangerous right. until it was too late. You don't know you've got a virus in your computer. Yes. Until, until it's too late. 
until it's too late. Right. It doesn't come in and put up on the screen and flash up and say, hey, I just invaded your computer. Right. <laughs> no. And you know what? The devil hasn't sent Trojan horses into churches with a sign on their face that said, I'm a Trojan horse. Beware of me. No. I'm dangerous. I kick. I bite. I buck. I'll throw you off. I'll do whatever I can to kill you. No. They come in and they look like they're harmless, but they're dangerous. And yes. you know what? Sadly, many Christians don't even realize how dangerous the Trojan horses really are to their spiritual lives. Right. Yes. Well, let me tell you something. America, America is crumbling. America is falling. America is going off the rails. America is going down the wrong road. America is like the Titanic. She's already taken on water. She's about to go under. Right. And she's going under because of these things right here. Right. Because they've slipped into the church. And you know where the problem is? Uh, listen, we can blame, listen, we can blame Biden all we want. You can blame Trump all you want. You can blame anybody you want. But I tell you what, the problem started to go up in the mirror. Amen. The problem started in the church house. Amen. It started right here behind the pulpit. And when it started right in the pulpit, it just filtered out into the pew. And the next thing you know, the people in the pulpit quit preaching the Bible. Amen. And the people in the pew quit believing the Bible. Amen. Right. And then before long, you got people who pulpit shouldn't even been allowed to be in a pulpit. Amen. What if my cane hook? It's in there. They all get a cane hook and just yank them out. Amen. Right. That's what, nah, I'm good, John. I'm good. If I get them out, I'll just ring next somebody. Now. We have a lot <laughs> But I, I'm just saying, listen, listen, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people that shouldn't be in the pulpit in America tonight. That's right. right. Yeah. If I told you I want to be a brain surgeon, I'm going to go down to the hospital tomorrow, and I'm going to sign up, and I'm going to be a brain surgeon. When you come down, I'm going to be waiting on you. So, oh, no, Pastor, no, uh, I love you. I appreciate you, but you're not qualified to do that. Right. In fact, if Eddie would have been laying on that table just a few weeks ago, I looked up, and I said, hey, Eddie. Uh, <laughs> it's your pastor, buddy. Yeah. I'm ready to replace that shoulder. I got a friend who's been like Jess Collins. He got to say, I think I'll be back in a few weeks. <laughs> I got to feel sure Shirley Maxson, and she loves me. Well, she loves me. She loves my wife. But I tell you what, if she get ready to give her that shot, put that stuff in her, and she's about to go out, all of a sudden she looks up and says, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to cut your knee off, Shirley, and put your new one on. <laughs> I bet she'd sober up right fast. Amen. <laughs> But yet we've got people that we're allowed to be in the pulpit. It's no more qualified to be in the pulpit than I am to be in an operating room. Yeah. Right. Just because you want to be in the pulpit doesn't make you qualified to be there. That's right. Just because you think I've got a Bible and I can read, I can get it. No, that does not qualify you to be there. So today, we don't realize how dangerous Trojan horses are. That's right. right. Christians play and toy around with sin, not knowing how dangerous sin really is. Yeah. Right. If we really knew how dangerous sin was, we'd have let it to get away from it. Yeah. We wouldn't invite it in. We invite it in. Right. Every one of you invited in. Right. Yep. Right. I invited in. It's on my phone. It's on my TV. Yeah. You can't even watch you can't even watch it. I start saying, good show. I don't know where is a good show on TV. <laughs> yeah. And if you, can, if you can find a good show on there, they'll put, they'll put a commercial on there advertising the alphabet people. Yeah, absolutely. Or two men uh, uh, hugging and kissing one another. Or two women. I, I, I like some of this. I listen. I ain't even seen a man I want to really hold hands with.
Am I right? I mean, tell me, Charles Stanley died yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, years old. Charles Stanley passed away. His son is plumb off the rail. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. True. His son is just as crazy as the best book. Yeah. Right. His son has got one of the biggest churches in America with campuses all around the, the Atlanta area and the, the Georgia area down there. And this is crazy. This is cr playing Led Zeppelin Stairway to Heaven and, and crazy stuff and affirming the alphabet people and all that stuff. God help him. Yeah. yeah. God help him. Amen. Listen, Amen. I can't Amen. take you far to look. You can go right out yonder and just look up and down the road and realize their church is every day. Their church is even no control. They've gone off the deep end. Right. The yeah. floodgates have been opened up and the liberals and the moderns and the Trojan horses have come in and they brought this crazy stuff into the church that a few years ago somebody would have kicked you out. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right. Way more people like John and Dennis and these guys who guard that door back there, they never get in. That's right. Yeah. So they kicked their, they don't have to worry about throwing them out. They kicked their rear end out so they come through the door. Amen. They put them out there under that, under that portico. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what that was, do you? I said, hey, we're not having that here. You, you, you listen, you can't do that. I told you one time, I just about went on top of a car hood on a guy one time, right out of the church bill. I was a pastor of the church, it's my job. The Bible said when Abraham went, when he made that covenant with God, they cut those animals in, in pieces, and Abraham and God passed between that and made a covenant one with another that Abraham had to beat the buzzards, the birds, off of the sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a guy come to our church dressed up like the devil, won't try to scare everybody here, get under everybody's skin. Son, I will I said, man, I'll go, hey, son, son, I'll wear him out. Amen. I was a lot younger then. <laughs> Today I sent Travis out. <laughs> <laughs> or Stephen. <laughs> or John or somebody major, but man, I'd say I'd, I'd be like Saul. So here's my armor, boys. Go out there and fight. <laughs> but thirty years ago, I went out myself. After. That's right. But man, listen, ain't somebody. Listen, I'm responsible for this church. Amen. Yeah. I got to stand before God and give an account for what happens. Yeah. You don't have to. You say, well, this is the way I think. I don't care what you think it ought to be. You don't have to stand before God and give an account. That's right. I've got to give an account before God. I've got to stand before Almighty God and give an account for what happens in this place right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, if I can, if I can help. Them. And thank God we get some big, strong, strapping young men. I love this young crowd, don't you? Amen. I love that. Man, listen, hey, and I got a feeling they're going to side with the pastor. Right. And all I believe about that, you'd be like a mad dog and just say, sick them. <laughs> so they, they, they climb all over. Right. If not, if they won't do it, I send Weston out there. If I have to, I'll call Brian. Give me somebody to do it. Have you ever noticed how Satan works? Think of it. He makes things that are dangerous appear to be harmless. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about it. Go back, go all the way back to Genesis chapter three and read the story about how Satan came to Eve, and how did he come? How did Satan come to Eve in the form of what? Serpent, a snake. Now, I'm gonna finish some of you right now. Probably people on the internet, but God help you. I hate snakes. Amen. Every snake to me is dangerous. Every snake's poisonous. Somebody said, "What kind of snake was this?" Poisonous. I don't care if it's a green snake, I don't care if it's a garter snake, I don't care, I really don't care if it's a, if it's a big night crawl. I don't care anything along that line to me is dangerous, man. I don't like it, I don't like form, I don't like any snake, I don't like any form. And I know the people, they say, oh, I love it, but I, I'm scared to death of them. Now you say, okay, preacher, we're going we're to scare you. Uh -uh. But be real careful because you're not going to, you, you know, sometimes the reflexes, you get you busted right in the nose. <laughs>
or legs. Right. Now, when you think about that, man, he, he, you know why he wasn't having feet? Jesus has defeated him. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Raise your hand up. Katie knows that. 
But yeah, we got people running out there when we go. You say, why is Satan? Because he's a devourer. Yes. And then I got to think of another place in the Bible. Satan only compared to a snake, and only compared to a lion, he's compared to a great red dragon. Yep. Right. Revelation chapter number 12, verse number 13, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns up on his head. Drop down to verse number 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Man, listen, he was depicted as a great red dragon. I will tell you, every time you read about Satan in the Bible, it's a nasty, ugly, terrible, wild, crazy beast of a creature that wants to destroy you. Yeah, right. right. And there are Christians that have found out too late that the Trojan horse is dangerous after the fact. Many churches have closed the door. We got this church because people have gotten that dwindled down to nothing. Thank God we got to crank back up. Amen. Amen. Man, we got, man, we got to fire up, baby. We got preaching going. On. We got the water hole going, man. We got people walking out. Thank God for that. Amen. 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 And then many preachers have quit right. because they brought Trojan horses into their church and into their lives. Amen. There've been a lot of Christians that have just been defeated spiritually. Because they brought Trojan horses into the life. Point number two. I'm going to be done by about nine tonight, so hold on. Point number two. <laughs> Trojan horses are not only dangerous, they're deceptive. That's right. Yeah. They're deceptive. Absolutely. Now, wouldn't have been something that when they looked over that wall, from Troy and looked down and saw that big wooden horse, somebody would have had enough sense to go out and inspect it? Wouldn't you think somebody would have looked to see if there was a trap door? There was something. There was something a little bit crazy or strange about that. No, but because it was, it was deceptive, it deceived the people of Troy. Right. So they brought in their city. So it's got a fancy gift. That's what Satan tells you things. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to help you out. He's trying to hurt you. The yes. Right. Right. Why will they ever deceive you? One of Satan's biggest schemes is to deceive people. Yeah. I've yeah. 20 some lessons on everything that. Satan deceives people on. That's right. From the sacred to the saints, to the service, to the songs, to the scriptures, to sex, to sin, to saints, to I went right down the line. Amen. About 19 or 20 lessons on that. And the Bible tells us in chapter number 11, verse number 13, for such are false apostles, mm-hmm. deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There are people out there walk, walking around, rolling around, they look like they're all right. Right. False teachers don't come into church with a sign on their head saying, I'm a false teacher. I'm here to destroy your church. <laughs> had a good friend one time. I, I, I love this guy, but he about like me just blunt to the point. He care to tell you just what it was. This guy called my church, stopped by the visit one day. He said, hey, he said, uh, he said I, I, I want to preach at your church. He said, what happened to your church? He said, well, said, we had to close it down. And we got that. He said, we're not preaching my church. Amen. Amen. Uh, you, you destroy your church, we're going to preach in my church. No, say you could go somewhere else. And listen, they, they, listen, I can guarantee you that for you, 50 churches in Oak Show, send them somewhere else. He said, Well, preach, we're out to get everybody. No, we ain't out to get everybody. No, we're not out to get everybody. We're we'll to get the right ones. Amen. And get people that want to be saved and do it the right way. We, listen, we can't get everybody. I heard a preacher say, Remember that? I heard, heard that preacher say, Well, we're going to do everything we sure to stand to get people. No, we're not. We're not going to go around. We're going to go this route. We're going to go the Bible route. And we do it the Bible way. And we're going to do it the New Testament way. And we're going to do it God's way. Because there are people out there that, that are just deceptive and deceive you. The Bible said no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yes. If Satan would come to you in that great red dragon form, you would run from him. Yep. That's right. But he doesn't. If you're a guy, he comes to you as a, a blonde-haired girl, tan as a tan as a biscuit man, and look good, and more curls on her than, than a road up in West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and then listen, don't sit there and laugh at me. No, you didn't do that. I said, well, that doesn't bother me. We need to go get you. We need to take you to the hospital and get you checked out. Right. We need to get your T levels checked. <laughs> any any red blood in the mess, you know, you know, you know, look at a woman that doesn't bother me. God help you. Be the biggest liar in the church. Amen. I mean, that's the way Satan gets you. He deceives you. Amen. I mean, I, I'm just going to say he deceived. Go back to the story of Genesis chapter 3. Satan deceived Eve into thinking it was okay to talk to a snake. That's right. Hmm. Anybody talk to a snake? I got problems. Right. I, I talk to something. I talk to them. You know what I say to them? 
I said, I'm going to kill you. I said, let me go get my shovel, go get my hole, go get me a golf club, go get my ball back, go get my gun. Stay right there. If you're there when I get back, I'm going to kill you. I'll talk to him. That's the way I talk. I'll kill you. I ain't never got this thing. And so, oh, you're so pretty. Your skin is so soft. You must, your skin so soft. You're so cool. What do you feel on my body? You just give me the heebie jeebies and make this goosebumps come up all over me. I love looking into your little beady eyes and your little forked tongue sitting at me. I love you. God help you if you that kind of person. You need help. We need to get you help tonight. Huh? Can you imagine, can you imagine the, the snake walking up to Eve and was so deceptive, so deceptive, so deceptive. I, I, listen, I, I never read any word in the Bible other than a donkey spoke one time. Yep. And God allowed that donkey to talk. Yep. I never read about animals talking. No. Right. In the Genesis account, you don't read the animals going around saying, Hey, Adam, how you doing today, buddy? <laughs> Where you at? Going down to the hole, pen. No. But it was so deceptive that when that snake walked up and began to talk with Eve, guess what she did? She talked back. Right. Can I say the worst thing you can do is dialogue with the devil? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You dialogue with the devil. He's smarter than I'm gonna I just I'm gonna just tell you not you're you feel it. He's smarter than you. Yeah. yeah. He's been at this a long he knows every trick in the book. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. You say, well, you know, this doesn't bother me, preacher work. He probably won't try that on you. He That's right. You. That's right. But if he can find out what this bothers you, he'll use that on Yes, he you. will. Amen. Yeah. I remember one time. Kevin and I just got married, and I used to shoot a bow and arrow about years ago. I used to shoot in hay, and I had my hay covered up at Daddy's house. And I went up there to get the hay to move it to our house, and had it covered up with a tarp, and dripped it off, and there like a big snake right on top of it. <laughs> just about called me to die right there. <laughs> I'm running in, got my 12 gauge shotgun, come running back out, and my neighbor come running out, and they went to snake handling church. Mm. Oh, people. Good, people. good people, just, just, just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Come run out and say, oh, listen, don't hurt that snake. Said, we've had, we've had a ringneck snake loose in the house for months. We don't know where it is. I said, let me tell you something. I said, you can do what you want to with them on that side of the fence. On this side of the fence, we kill them. <laughs> I put that gun, I put that 12 gauge shotgun right up against that snake and pulled that trigger. Amen. And I couldn't find a piece of that snake. <laughs> it was curled up there and pulled up there laying there and buddy when I shot I dug through that hay I looked in the, under, under, the, under the carport I looked there I set the hay on fire <laughs> I thought I burned the house down because I said man I ain't gonna have no snake right here running around where I am and you, you say well I'm pretty sure you all leave no snakes on you leave them alone <laughs> they, get up, they, they get around me they gonna get killed yeah. Yeah. so you yeah. just gotta realize that Jesus warned in Matthew 24 4 he said Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no man deceive you Paul warned us many times in the New Testament don't be deceived Amen. many places in the New Testament over and over and over and over and over warns us about do not be deceived but yet we're deceived right. the crazy yeah. thing about being deceived the crazy thing about being deceived is the person that's deceived don't know they're deceived. Right. That's right. You ever try to talk, you talk to somebody that's unsaved? They're deceived as they can be. Yeah. They think everything's okay. Well, pretty much, what, what are you telling me? I need to be saved. Why do I need Jesus? I've got a job. I've got a house. I've got a family. I've got money in the bank. I've got good health. Why are you telling me I need to be saved? Well, this is deceived. They don't even know it. <clears throat> Isn't it something that, man, so many preachers preach false doctrine? Yep. Yeah. They just preach it every week. And just like it. I mean, stuff that's just so outrageous. I was watching one other day. And talking about that, 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 now that, that now they've got gold dust. They said gold dust is just floating. That, can, can you believe this? That gold dust is falling down out of heaven and falling on their shoes and on their feet. Yeah. Wait a minute. And people believe that. And they believed that. And they believed that God came down this morning and had coffee with them at their house. Yeah. You need help. Yes. Right. We need to get Travis or Stephen or Major or some of these guys, Brian Big Strong, help you all with the car when we 
we say amen. But man, you'll have to come over under the prayer cup. It's it amazing so many people. So many people believe that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's worse, the people that preach or people that believe it. Right. You say, well, really nobody, you don't believe they believe it? Yeah, you know what some of these guys are worth on TV? Oh, yeah. Right. Millions. Millions. Right. Right. Houses everywhere. Right. Jets. Not just jet, jet, jets. Yep. And people believe that. But yet they die. But yet they wear glasses. Right. But yet they get old and walk with a cane. But yet, people still believe it. Mm-hmm. Ernest Sainsley. Remember Ernest Sainsley? Did everybody know Ernest Sainsley? He was one of those crazies from up in Ohio. Because well, his wife died. He put a phone in her, he put a phone in her casket so she could call it. <laughs> she never called. <laughs> Harry Houdini's wife gave, gave him a, a code word said when I die I'm going to give you a code word so when I come back you'll know it's me 10 years for 10 years on his birthday she waited for 10 years you know what she finally said after 10 years Nothing. he's not coming back <laughs> we got people that are seeing that so satanic perception is running rapid yeah. you say why well, I'm going to tell you why <clears throat> I tell you what we're going to do in Okeechobee you want to do it you want to go with me? You want to help me do it? Tell me, we're going to build a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church that we're going to stay within the borders of this cover. We're not going to wipe the borders. Yeah. We're going to stay right there. And then you're going to be saying, well, I don't like that. And I'm going to tell you what. And my wife doesn't like this. Yeah. There's a door that leads out just as well as it led in. Yeah. Yeah. Because you ain't going to come in here and destroy our church. That's right. That's right. I've got a bulldog tenacity. Amen. <laughs> I'm a redneck coal miner from the hills and the hollers of Logan County. And I ain't going to stand and let somebody come in and destroy a church that I'm the pastor of. That's right. Amen. Now, we welcome everybody and we let people come in, but listen, don't think you're going to come and take over. Because it's what happened. Get your KJV Bible. This is the only defense you got Amen. against men to see. Amen. Amen. It's not Amen. your knowledge. It's not you. So I've been. You don't understand, Pastor. I've got a degree. Well, I, I've got a couple of them myself. <laughs> don't say much about them. You know, somebody says, I bet I'd like the, like the, the, the curl on a, on a, on a hog drawer in it doesn't add any more meat to the hog. <laughs> I mean, I've got a couple of degrees myself. But that's not, that's not where it is. Amen. 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 It's right there. Amen. Right. I've known people that could, I've known people that could barely read and write. That had more spiritual discernment, people with degrees. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2, one of my favorite verses, preach the word. Amen. Amen. Don't preach fables. Don't preach stories. Don't preach little fairy tales. Don't preach all kinds of stuff. Preach the word. Amen. Amen. Be asked in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The time right. they were under sound doctrine. Left in those steps, and the Hebrews said, have teachers, teachers, have engineers. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. Listen, to this, and shall be turned unto fables. Unto fables. It's almost like it's a judicial act of God. Isn't it amazing if you don't want to believe God, you don't have to believe God? That's right. You don't want to believe the Bible, you don't have to believe the Bible. You don't want to do right, you don't have to do right. You don't want to be saved, you don't have to be saved. There's a hell for people like you. That's right. All right. You don't, have to do, you don't have to do that. Right. But I'll tell you what God did say. Right there, he said, I turn you into fables. That's right. I'm going to tell you what, I don't know whether you, I, I don't think, I've been on it for so long, and I don't think you believe it. I don't think you even believe it. But there's so many fables being preached from behind these desks. Oh, that's right. That people yeah. are just God. People are so, what was P.T. Barnum said? There's one born ever met. That's right. Well, he looks like a preacher. He's got a Bible. He's got on a three-piece suit. He had a snake walk and had arms and legs so he could talk. And he deceived deep. I'm going to tell you what, I'm convinced that many people have turned, been turned unto faith. Yep. All right. Well, that's half of my sermon tonight. So that means I'm going to have to carry this over again for another part two. Amen. Why? Amen. The Trojan horses are so dangerous. Amen. But I want you to remember, hope you mark it down. Trojan horses are dangerous because they are. Number one, they are dangerous. Yes. Right. Number two, they're deceptive. Amen. 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 
If you're here tonight, maybe you're not saved, maybe you're not where you ought to be, maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you're watching online tonight. Maybe you never opened your heart up to Jesus. Maybe you're away from Jesus. Maybe you're cold and backslidden. Maybe you're involved in all these people involved in all this new age mysticism. Right. Run from Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody just told me something the other day, and I thought, I've just been preaching and teaching on it. Somebody's come up and says that to me. Listen, go by the Bible. Amen. You have no control or authority over God. That's right. right. You're not a God. You'll never be a God. That's right. You'll always be a lost sinner who's been saved by the grace of God. Just a sinner saved by grace. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going to die and go to hell. That's right. right. Yes. And if you call your back slip, you're not doing anybody any good, you hurt yourself and everybody around you. Yeah. You're to come to an altar. You're right tonight. Amen. Amen. You say, I preach, I'd really like to be saved. How, how do I get saved? It's very easy. Mm -hmm. Right here on the back of this card right here. There's a problem. There's a penalty. There's a provision. There's a promise. The Bible tells us how to be saved. If you just ask Jesus to come into your heart and say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. Tonight, the best I know that I'm asking Jesus to save me. Right. I believe he died. I believe he rose. Amen. I sent that picture. I sent that picture to Western. One of my brothers said, I'm going to send you a picture. I saw something. I sent it to him. He said, wow, that's precious. Amen. That little fellow come up to me. I said, right here, son. He said, right here, son. He said, right here, son. He said, right here, son. I just took him up, wrapped him up all night and talked to him. He got saved. Amen. 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 Jesus said, man, listen, don't turn, don't turn to the kids. No. Right. Right. I'm going to stop right here. I'm, I'm trying to pray a prayer, but I'm not going to I remember with Kathy and I talked about that. I remember one time at a younger boy. Was she 13, 14 years old? She stood in the back of the church right there and prayed. Had got on the eye stuff around her. She cried and looked like a war paint. Amen. Looked like a war paint. She cried. Oh, God was all over her. She went home. Her mom said, no, no. Oh, you're not going to say She called me. Oh, her mom called me. <coughs> what kind of, oh, my goodness, what I'm doing. And I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that girl ever got saved. Mm -hmm. I remember in the story of a girl in church, wanted to get saved, come home, her dad said, you're not going to get saved. Yeah. You're not going to get saved. I forbid you. You're not going to go. You're not, not going to go. You're not going to get saved. Well, girl got sick. Called the doctor, and the doctor came in. Okay, so she ain't going to live. Daddy got down and said, <coughs> said, baby, ask Jesus to come into your heart. She said, no, Daddy. He told me not to ever ask Jesus. Mm. Wow. Mm. And I'm not going to ask Jesus. He died and went to hell. Oh. Mm. You tell me why. You tell me why I'm going to turn away God like that right there, six year old come crown. Mm. Tell me he loves Jesus and he wants to be saved. Right. He knows Jesus died on the cross. He knows Jesus rose again the third day. Amen. What else do you have to know of it? That's right. What did you know when you got saved? That's right. right. That's all I knew when I got saved. I was lost and all my way to hell. Right. right. I don't want to go. Amen. And that's as easy as I stand saying, Mr. Dean, you got a, a verse. I challenge you. What's all here? I get saved. I give you a <laughs> Page number 63. I need you every hour. You need to come tonight. Come. It's an altar of prayer. Amen. Amen. Different 63.
Don't forget to tell somebody about Jesus. Don't forget to invite somebody. Get you a couple of these cards and hand out. Major, come and dismiss us tonight. Huh?
dear Lord. We just thank you for them. We thank you for everyone that's here, dear Lord. And we just love and appreciate it, dear Lord. We love you and thank you for all you do for us in our lives, dear Lord. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that you will be done. In Jesus' sweet precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.